You'll never get that rusted human relic to roar. Zoltar guffawed at his partner, as he pointed an amused tentacle at the ancient earth tank. The Malon engineers revved their tools, eager to crack open the secrets locked inside the millennia-old war machine. Never say never. Humans built things to last back then, Primus countered, as he eagerly scanned the battered steel hull. His eyes lit up. I bet there's a beating combustion heart still thumping inside this old beast, waiting to be awakened. Zoltar shook his head, his green scales glinting under the hangar lights. That primitive scrap heap. It belongs in a museum, not on a battlefield. Our plasma cannons would vaporize it in one shot. Then why does the Imperium want every human relic destroyed? Primus asked. He ran a tentacle along the chipped paint. There's more to these machines than rusted axles and busted treads. There's human spirit in the alloy. Spirit in alloy. Now you've gone space mad, Zoltar chuckled. Fine, if you're so confident, let's make it interesting. I bet you a year's pay you can't even turn the engine over. Primus narrowed his eyes. A year's salary would hurt, but his engineer's pride was on the line. He had to get this tank running, not just for credits, but to prove that human ingenuity was not something to scoff at. He picked up a laser spanner. You're on. Primus said, stand back and watch the magic happen. This primitive scrap heap still has some fight left in her. By the gods, when she roars to life, the Imperium will shake in their exo-armor. Primus rolled up his sleeves and got to work on restoring the tank engine. Each day, he painstakingly removed rusted components, cleaned off the accumulated grime of centuries, and fabricated replacement parts that would mesh seamlessly with the original human design. It was gruelling labour, with Primus hunched over the greasy innards of the war machine for hours on end, his tentacles aching and his back sore. But he pushed through the discomfort, driven by a growing respect for the humans who had built this vehicle. Zoltar would periodically poke his head into the hangar, a smug grin on his scaly face. Still wasting your time on that scrap pile? Maybe you should just admit defeat and pay up now. Primus would simply shake his head and keep working, too engrossed in his task, to rise to Zoltar's taunts. As he laboured, he found himself talking about the history of these tanks, almost as if the vehicle's presence was drawing the stories out of him. You know, when the cryptics invaded Earth, their biomechanical walkers seemed unstoppable, Primus said as he carefully cleaned a fuel injector. But the humans refused to give up. They started salvaging tech from downed cryptics machines, and integrating it into their own vehicles. Zoltar leaned against the tank's hull. His curiosity peaked despite himself. Really? How did that help? Seems like putting a band-aid on a gaping wound. That's what the cryptics thought too, Primus said with a chuckle. Until human tanks started flying at them with anti-gravity repulsors and blasting through their armor with particle beams. The invaders never saw it coming. As the weeks went by, Zoltar found himself spending more and more time in the hangar, listening to Primus's stories of human ingenuity and determination. Almost against his will, he started to develop a grudging respect for the squishy pink bipeds who had once seemed so inferior. Finally, after a month of tireless work, Primus was ready to put his restored engine to the test. He carefully lowered it into the tank's hull and connected it to a fully charged power cell. Moment of truth! he said, wiping his tentacles on a greasy rag. Zoltar, get over here, you're going to want to see this. Zoltar sighed dramatically, but he obediently climbed up onto the tank's hull to peer into the open engine compartment. Fine, let's see this miracle of human engineering, but when nothing happens, I expect my money by the end of the day. Primus just grinned and reached for the ignition switch. His tentacle hovered over it for a moment, savoring the anticipation, then, with a deep breath, he flipped the switch. Dirt and the massive tank engine thundered to life with an earth-shaking roar. Zoltar's jaw dropped, his tentacles falling slack at his sides. He stared wide-eyed as the ancient war machine growled and rumbled, its powerful motor settling into a steady, throaty purr. Primus couldn't resist a triumphant grin, his eyes sparkling with pride, as he watched his scaly partner gawk in disbelief. That's... 
That's impossible, Zoltar stammered, taking a step back. It's just an old rust bucket. There's no way... Primus chuckled, patting the tank's armoured flank. Never underestimate human engineering, my friend. They built these beauties to last. Zoltar quickly composed himself, crossing his tentacles over his chest. Okay, so you got the engine running. Big deal. I bet the rest of the systems are fried. Probably can't even move, let alone fight. Primus's grin only widened. O oh, ye of little faith, watch and learn. With a nimble leap, Primus scaled the tank's hull and dropped into the open cockpit. He settled into the commander's seat, his tentacles playing over the controls as he familiarized himself with the layout. You know, he called down to Zolta, human commanders used to lead from the front, right in the thick of the action. They'd often operate the tanks themselves, inspiring their troops with their courage and skill. Zoltar cocked his head. His curiosity peaked despite himself. He clambered up the side of the tank to peer into the cockpit, watching as Primus worked the controls with growing confidence. Is that so? Zoltar asked. Seems risky, putting a commander in harm's way like that. Primus nodded. True, but it was effective, especially against the cryptics. Those biomechanical monstrosities were tough, but they were slow and clumsy in tight spaces. The humans' preferred tactic was to lure them into close quarters, into the narrow streets and alleys of their cities. There the smaller, more agile human tanks could outmaneuver them, getting in behind to target weak points in their armor. As he spoke, Primus flipped switches and toggled levers, his tentacles a blur of motion. One by one, the tank's systems came online, indicator lights blinking to life on the control panel. Zoltar watched in awe as the massive turret whirred and swiveled, its servos whining smoothly. The gun barrel elevated and depressed, tracking imaginary targets. Incredible, Zoltar breathed. It's like it was built yesterday. Primus flashed him a grin. You ain't seen nothing yet. He reached for a large red lever marked Arg Repulsors and pulled it all the way back. The tank shuddered and groaned, a deep, resonant hum building from somewhere beneath their feet. Slowly, ponderously, the massive war machine began to rise, lifting off the workshop floor on a cushion of shimmering blue-tinted energy. It hovered there, a meter off the ground, swaying gently. Zoltar stared slack-jawed, his eyes wide with wonder. Primus leaned out of the cockpit, grinning down at his astonished partner. Still think it belongs in a museum? he asked, his voice thick with satisfaction. Zoltar could only shake his head mutely, marveling at the incredible sight of the ancient war machine hanging effortlessly in the air, a testament to human ingenuity and the enduring power of their fighting spirit. Primus's tentacles danced over the controls, making minute adjustments to the repulsor field. The tank bobbed and weaved in response, its movements nimble and precise, despite its immense bulk. Bet the Imperium won't be laughing when they see this beast rolling towards them, Primus said, his eyes hardening. They think they've stamped out the last traces of human resistance, but they're about to learn that you can never fully extinguish the human spirit. It endures like a flame in the darkness, just waiting for the right moment to... Flare to life once more. With a low whine, the repulsors powered down, the shimmering blue glow fading as the tank settled back onto its treads with a metallic clank. Primus hopped down from the cockpit, landing lightly beside Zoltar. Gotta hand it to those humans, Zoltar said, running an appreciative tentacle along the tank's armoured flank. They sure knew how to build them tough. Primus nodded. Durability and ease of maintenance were hallmarks of human engineering, their gear was designed to keep running even in the harshest conditions, with minimal support. He popped open a service hatch, revealing a tangle of grease-stained machinery. See this? Modular components, standardized parts. A field mechanic could swap out a damaged hydraulic actuator in minutes, even under fire. Zoltar peered into the compartment, marveling at the elegant simplicity of the design. The cryptic's tech was never like this, all biomechanical nightmares that needed constant pampering by their specialist drones. Exactly, Primus said. 
humans understood that wars are won by the side that can adapt and endure. He chuckled, a memory surfacing. There was this one story about a human mechanic during the siege of New Baghdad. His tank took a hit, mangled the leg actuators. No spare parts, cryptics closing in. Zoltar leaned in, fully engrossed. What did he do? Scavenged the hydraulics from a ruined cargo loader, Primus said, grinning. Jury rigged them into place and got the beast moving again. Made it back just in time to hold the line and save a squad of pinned-down infantry. They went on to retake the whole sector. Zoltar shook his head, amazed. That human spirit, unbreakable. They fell silent for a moment, contemplating the depths of human resolve. Then Primus frowned, a thought occurring to him. We've got the tank running, but no ammo for the main gun. Just a glorified paperweight without something to shoot. Zoltar deflated slightly. Damn, guess even the best machine is useless without the right ordnance. But Primus's eyes had taken on a familiar gleam, his engineer's mind racing. Maybe not. I remember reading about human tank crews improvising when they ran low on shells. They'd machine these solid slug rounds, use the cannon's magnetic accelerator to fling them at the enemy. Zoltar perked up, catching on. You think we could replicate that, whip up some custom ammo? Worth a shot, Primus said, rubbing his tentacles together eagerly. I've got a stash of scrap ferrous alloy that should do the trick. Just need to shape it, dial in the accelerator coils. Zoltar clapped him on the shoulder, grinning. Then what are we waiting for? Let's get to work. Side by side, the two engineers hurried off to gather materials, their tentacles twitching with renewed purpose. The ancient war machine sat silent behind them, waiting patiently for the tools of its trade. Soon, very soon, it would taste battle once again, carrying the indomitable spirit of its creators into the fray. The Imperium would tremble before... The days blurred together as Primus and Zoltar toiled over the tank's main cannon, machining slug after slug from scrap alloy. They pored over ancient schematics and trial-fired countless test rounds, fine-tuning the magnetic accelerator coils until the barrels hummed with barely restrained power. At last, they deemed their handiwork ready for a true field test. They loaded the modified tank onto a heavy cargo skiff and set out for the remote badlands beyond the city limits, a place of rusting shipwrecks and windswept dunes. As the sun dipped low on the horizon, painting the sky in vivid oranges and purples, they carefully maneuvered the tank off the skiff. Its repulsors kicked up swirling eddies of ancient dust as it settled onto the cracked hardpan. Primus clambered into the cockpit, while Zoltar perched atop the turret, a satchel of their custom rounds slung over his shoulder. The tank thrummed to life, its engine growling with barely contained power, Primus scanned the barren landscape, seeking a suitable target. His eyes fell upon the gutted husk of an old Malon freighter, its hull pitted and scarred from centuries of exposure. There, he said, his voice crackling over the cockpit com, range 800 meters, bearing 030. Zoltar peered through the gunner's scope, the crosshairs wavering slightly as he made minute adjustments. Target acquired, slug loaded and ready to fire on your command. But Primus hesitated, his tentacle hovering over the trigger. A memory swam up from the depths of his mind, a story he had once read in a crumbling human history tome. Did I ever tell you about the Battle of Tannhauser Gate? he asked softly. Zoltar glanced down at him, curious. No, I don't believe so. Primus leaned back in the commander's seat, his eyes distant. It was during the darkest days of the war when the cryptics were on the verge of overrunning Earth, they had this massive cloning facility on Titan, churning out fresh warriors by the thousands. Earth Command knew that if they didn't take it out, humanity was doomed. Zoltar listened intently, the slug in his tentacles momentarily forgotten. They sent in a single tank, the Indomitable, Primus continued, crewed by the bravest soldiers Earth had to offer. They fought their way through the cryptics lines, enduring unimaginable hardships until they reached the heart of the cloning complex. His voice took on a reverent tone. They fired everything they had, every shell, every scrap of ordnance, 
the explosions ripped through the biomechanical horror, setting off a chain reaction that consumed the entire facility. Zoltar's eyes widened. They did it? They destroyed the cloning center? Primus nodded solemnly. They did, but the cryptics were enraged. They converged on the indomitable from all sides, determined to crush the humans who had dealt them such a blow. He took a shuddering breath. The crew fought like demons, but they were low on ammo, so they did the only thing they could. They loaded the tags of their fallen comrades into the cannon and fired them into the charging horde. Zoltar felt a chill run down his spine. The dog tags of their own dead? Yes, Primus whispered. A final act of defiance. A way to make sure their brothers were with them right to the end. And those tags, they tore through the cryptics like they were paper, bought just enough time for human reinforcements to arrive and evacuate the survivors. For a long moment neither of them spoke, the weight of the tail hanging heavy in the air. Then, slowly, deliberately, Zoltar reached into his satchel and withdrew a single slug. Inscribed upon its surface in elegant human script were a dozen names. The names of the Indomitable's crew. Further fallen, he said softly, sliding the slug into the breach. Primus nodded, his eyes glistening. For the fallen. He depressed the trigger and the cannon roared. The inscribed round hurtled across the badlands, a silver streak against the dying light. It struck the ruined freighter dead center, punching a molten hole clean through its armored hull. For a long time they simply sat there, watching the slug's vapor trail slowly dissipate in the twilight. The ghosts of humanity seemed to whisper around them, carried on the desert wind. "'We've grown complacent,' Primus said at last, his voice heavy with emotion. "'So assured of our own superiority. But the humans, they never gave up, never stopped fighting, even when all hope seemed lost.' Zoltar placed a tentacle on his shoulder, a gesture of solidarity. We've forgotten what it means to struggle, to innovate in the face of adversity. The humans, they understood. They knew that survival isn't about who has the best tech or the biggest guns. It's about spirit, determination, the will to keep going no matter the odds. Primus met his partner's gaze, a fire kindling in his eyes. Then let's remember, let's take the lessons this tank has taught us, and honor the legacy of its creators. From this day forward, we fight not just with weapons, but with the courage and ingenuity of the human race. Zoltar clasped his tentacle firmly, sealing the pact. For the indomitable, for Earth and for the future. And there, amidst the bones of the old world, a new resolve was born. A resolve to carry the torch of human defiance and ensure that their memory would endure, as eternal and unyielding as the stars above. The tank's engine rumbled to life once more, its repulsors casting an ethereal blue glow across the arid landscape. Primus inputted new coordinates, and Zoltar loaded another slug, the first of many. They had a water win, a galaxy to remind of the indomitable human spirit, and they would do it as the ancients had with ingenuity, courage, and an iron will that no enemy could break. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.